This clock is fast, right? It's twenty minutes fast. Huh? It's twenty minutes fast. Okay. <laughs> so how did it get so late? <laughs> okay. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Bhimaari. 
Namaste Sarasati Devi, Koravani Pracharini, Nimisha Shakyamani, Pushanta Deshatani. Om Namo Bhagavate Nipasute Paya. Om Namo Bhagavate Nipasute Paya. Om Namo Bhagavate Pasute Maya. Oh, so this evening we're celebrating this very special event. Lord Krishna picking up the Govardhan hill. This festival sometimes is known as Anakut, giving of grains, right? You can see it here made a very nice, colorful, all attractive Govardhan hill there. And this Govardhan hill is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 21, which is called the Venu Gita, where the gopis are describing about Lord Krishna's flame of the flute. And they describe also the glories of Govardhan Hill. And the gopis say, Ahanja Adri Abhava Arida Sabarya. Yadrama Krishna Charanas Parashat Pramodha. The gopis describe this Govardhan hill as being Hari Dasabhaya. There are many devotees who are called Hari Das. Of course, we know Nama Acharya Hari Das Thakur. And then there was also Junior Haridas. And Prahlad Maharaj is sometimes referred to as Haridas because of his great devotion for the Lord. And Maharaj Yudhisthira is sometimes also described as being Haridas. But the gopis describe Govardhan Hill as Hari Dasavarya, the very best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. Now the gopis themselves are described as being the best devotees. We often hear that the, of all the devotees, the gopis of Vrindavan are the best of all the devotees. But the gopis, they say, over that hill is the best. It's the nature of devotees. They will never say they are. They will always give the credit to others. You can read Brihad Bhagavatam Vita by Sanatana Goswami. It's also a similar description. Narada Muni is searching for the devotee who received the greatest mercy from Lord from the Lord. And he goes from one devotee to another, each devotee said, no, no, not me, you go to them. <laughs> and this way Narada Muni is sent from one devotee to another, from Prabhat to Hanuman, from Hanuman to the Pandavas, from the Pandavas to the Yadavas, from the Yadavas to Uddhava, from Uddhava to Raja, to the Gopis. And down. It's very interesting book. If you haven't read Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, I invite and encourage you, please try to read it. So the Gopis are describing Govardhan Hill as being the best of all the devotees of the Lord. And why? Why is this Govardhan Hill so, so praised? Because the Govardhan Hill offers so many facilities for Lord Krishna to enact his wonderful pastimes with the devotees there. 
Goverton Hill preside, provides, first of all, wonderful, clear crystal water in the days of Lord Krishna. Goverton Hill was much taller than it is today. Goverton Hill is shrinking. It gets smaller, the size of one mustard seed every day. So mustard seed, you know, they're not very big. In Bengal, in our we grow mustard. You can see farms all over. Uh, they grow mustard. Mustard grows quite easily, and you can see the mustard seeds. They're very small, but Govardhan Hill sh shrinks one mustard seed every day. So in the times of Lord Krishna, the Govardhan Hill was very tall. And there were waterfalls there. You don't see waterfalls there today because the Govardhan Hill is shrinking. Uh, not only did Govardhan, does Govardhan Hill provide water, which is very important for the cows. I don't think any of you keep any cows, do you? <laughs> not many cows. So if, if you get cows, you know it's very important. You need to drink a lot of water. You have to give them a lot of water every day. So the water falls are important. And similarly, the Yamuna River was very important. When Kaliya came into the Yamuna River, poisoned the Yamuna River, Lord Krishna had to take action, send her, send Kaliya away from them because the the cows couldn't drink the water due to the poison. Kaliya. So cows need a lot of water. Govardhan Hill and waterfalls. Not only waterfalls, but Go Govardhan Hill also produced many different uh, roots. Different roots would grow, which were very tasty to the cows. The cows would enjoy eating the different roots, as well as the grasses. And then also other benefits of the Govardhan Hill were the, the minerals which are there on the Govardhan Hill, different minerals which uh, people would could put on their faces, like cosmetics and so on, from the Govardhan Hill. And as well as that, the stones of Govardhan Hill were very special. In the summertime, when the ground is very hot, these stones on Govardhan Hill would be cool on the feet. And in the winter time, when it's cold, the stones are warm. So just imagine how merciful these stones on Govardhan Hill are. And you, they say that you can take a stone from the Govardhan Hill and you can worship that stone as being non-different from Lord Krishna. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was residing in Jagannath Puri, a devotee had come from Vrindavan, and he brought him a Govardhan Shila, and he presented to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, along with a garland of conch shells, so Lord Chaitanya was very, very happy to receive these things. And he kept that Govardhan Shila with him for several months. And he said regularly he would put the Govardhan stone on his head and he would hold it over his eyes. Eventually, Lord Chaitanya gave that Govardhan stone to one of his devotees, to Raghunath Das Goswami. He gave it to Raghunath Das, he told Raghunath Das how to worship. And he told Raghunath, he said, this farm, this stone from Govardhan Hill, he said, you can see the form of Krishna in that stone. So today it's common for devotees. Today it's common for devotees to uh, worship Govardhan Shila from Govardhan Swami, from Govardhan Hill. 
However, we warn you that you should not take stones from the Govardhan Hill without permission. You have to get permission from a Rajbasi. And you should also understand that if you take a stone from the Govardhan Hill, you will have to replace it with an equivalent amount of gold. So you like to take a stone that you have to replace it with the amount of gold. So be careful. <laughs> no, you have to, you don't have to pay the bridge basi the gold, but you do have to repay it to Krishna, to Lord Krishna. You have to spend an equivalent amount in gold. You have to replace that stone but by giving that gold for the service of Lord Krishna. And it happened like that. There was one temple uh, they were building in Houston, and they took they wanted a big shot, a big over the shield. They took this big over the shield. So well, they didn't realize afterwards they'd taken the stone that what happened was they had to spend a lot of money. <laughs> the devotee who took that stone. He was building a temple there in Govardhan. He had an ashram there in Govardhan. And he ended up spending a lot, much, much more money than he ever expected. So he understood this was Krishna taking the gold from him that, because he took that big Govardhan shield. So you have to be very careful in <laughs> taking any stones from the Govardhan. They're very, very sacred. So Lord Krishna performed wonderful pastimes with this over downhill. Of course, Lord Krishna is with I was just seeing Jayadrava Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balava Giri Bharatari. Lord Krishna is known as Giri Bharatari, the one who picks up the hill. So this is the wonderful pastime of Lord Krishna, which he enacted as a young child. At the age of uh, seven, Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill. Now, why would he pick up the Govardhan Hill? It wasn't like, you know, people go to weightlifting. You know, they go to the gym and they pick up weights. Lord Krishna wasn't doing any weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Although one time the artist, one of the artists was painting pictures and they thought Krishna must be very strong, so they, they put big muscles on the picture. <laughs> so when Prabhupada saw the painting, he said, no, 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 Krishna doesn't need muscles. <laughs> Krishna's not like that, you know. The, some men, you see, they have these big biceps, you know, that they spend a lot of time in the gym building up their bodies. So Lord Krishna didn't have to do weightlifting to pick up the Govardhan Hill. He is the Supreme Lord, and if he wants to pick up the Govardhan Hill, he can do it. The Govardhan Hill, you have to understand, is a personality. It's a personality who appeared from the spiritual world. When Lord Krishna said he was going to come in this world, he invited Radharani to come. But she thought, how could I come without the Yamuna Rupa and Govardhan Hill? Lord Krishna said, no, they're also coming too. So the Govardhan Hill also appeared in this world. Of course, Unfortunately, Govardhan got cursed because there was a great yogi. What was the name of the yogi? And then he, he was looking for a suitable place to do his meditation. You know, yogis like to meditate on the mountain. So he saw Govardhan, very big, beautiful mountain. 
and he thought, looks so nice. I would take, I'd like to take it to my place, to the place where I meditate. And so we got permission from Govardhan that Govardhan would go with him to his place. But Govardhan put a restriction. He said, if you ever stop anywhere and put me down, then I will stay there. I'm not going to go to another place. So if you stop somewhere, that will be the place where I stay. So Pulastya said, all right, so no problem. So Pulastya was a great yogi, and Govardhan agreed to be picked up by the yogi, and the yogi was flying, carrying the Govardhan hill. And at some point, they came over Braja. They came over the land of Braj. And Govardhan was thinking, how nice it would to be here in Braj. And it was arranged by the will of the Supreme Lord that Pulastya, was, who was carrying the Govardhan Hill, he got a call of nature. <laughs> so he had to stop and put down the Govardhan Hill. And he answered the call of nature and came back and tried to pick up Govardhan Hill and found he could not pick, a, pick up the hill anymore. And what's wrong? And Govardhan said to him, well, I told you, if you stop somewhere, I'm going to stay there. So Pulastya was not happy with that. So this is why he cursed Govardhan. He said, you're not going to come with me to my place where I wanted to. He wanted to go to somewhere like Benares or somewhere where he could meditate. But Govardhan wanted to be in Braja. So Govardhan wasn't going anywhere. And Pulastya said, then I curse you. You will get smaller, the size of a mustard seed every day. So in this way, Govardhan Hill is sh shrinking. And it said that when Govardhan Hill becomes level with the surface of the earth, at that time, Kali Yuga will be in full effect. So, uh, Govardhan, however, performed wonderful pastime here in 5,000 years ago with Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna, of course, enacted this pastime uh, for several reasons. One reason was to deal with the pride of Indra. Now, Lord Indra is the king of heaven, but he had become quite proud of himself. This is one of the problems of being a resident of the higher planets. When you live in the higher planets, they have a lot of opulence and sense gratification. And they're not always able to remember their position in relation to the, the Supreme Lord. So Indra had and he, he was receiving a sacrifice annually from the people of Vrindavan. It happened that Nanda Maharaj, father of Krishna, was one day preparing to do his Indra Yagya. And Lord Krishna saw his father and inquired from him, What are you doing, Baba? And Nanda Maharaj explained, that I'm going to do this in Riyaya. He said, we are the Vaishyas and we need rain. Rain is very important to have grass to feed the cows. Remember, Nanda Maharaj has a lot of cows. 900,000 cows. So you need a lot of grass to feed that many cows. So Nanda Maharaj said, every year we have to do Indra Yagya. Then we get good rain. And with the rain, we get a lot of grass. They're happy. We can feed the cows nicely. However, Lord Krishna said, Papa, you don't need to do Indra Yagya to get rain. The rain will fall anyway. The rain falls even on the sea. The sea doesn't do any Yagya. The sea has so much water, the rain is falling on the sea. Why bother to do Indra Yagya? 
And Lord Krishna even spoke a philosophy which is known as the Karma Mimamsa philosophy, which had been propagated by the sage Jainini. Now, this Karma Mimamsa philosophy is sometimes prominent among people who are not very religious, who don't know much about the real teachings of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna spoke this philosophy just for the purpose of bewildering his father. He told his father that you just have to do your duty. You do your duty, you'll get the result. That's karma mimamsa. If you do your work, you'll get the results. But that's it's not really true. You know, that's what people think. They think you just have to do your duty and you'll get the results. Well, we give the example that you know, you may have a good doctor and he may give you the best medicine, but still sometimes the patient dies. It's not true that just because you have the best doctor, you get the best medical treatment, that you'll be cured. And similarly, you can have children and the mother and father can be very good and they can do everything to bring up the child but still sometimes the child may be wayward and have bad habits. It's not necessarily true that just because mother and father are so good that the child will be good. You don't know. So we have to understand this karma mamasa philosophy, although sometimes it's propagated, it's not actually a fact. However, Lord Krishna presented it to his father. Just do your duty. You're a Vaishya. Your duty is to worship the cows, take care of the cows and the Brahmanas. And then Lord Krishna also, also added the Govardhan Hill. This Govardhan Hill is very important. The, if you go to Govardhan, how many of you have been to Govardhan Hill? Oh, quite so, nearly all. You're wonderful, right? So you've seen the cows there in Govardhan Hill. They're so beautiful, the cows on Govardhan Hill. Very wonderful cows there. So taking care of the cows is made easy with Govardhan Hill, because providing water and grass and roots, so many facilities, things which are necessary for the cows are all given by Govardhan Hill. So Lord Krishna knew that Indra was proud. He knew that this Indra had become proud and become attached to receiving this Indra Yagya. So Lord Krishna told his father, don't do this Indra Yagya. Just worship the cows and Govardhan Hill and the Brahmanas. Nanda Maharaj said, well, let's do both. Krishna said, no, not time, there's not enough time. We're going to do this properly. We'll use everything. We won't have any paraphernalia for Indra. You have to use everything. I want to do this very properly. So Nanda Maharaj, he is a, he's a great devotee of Lord Krishna. And he has to agree to his son and says, all right, we'll do it. Nanda Maharaj was so Wonderful, such a magnanimous personality. He said, all right, forget this Indra Yagya. Let's just do what Krishna wants. Let's please Krishna. Of course, Krishna had already performed many miracles already as a child. From his very birth, he killed the demon Putana. Then there were so many other agents of Kamsa who had come, and Lord Krishna had removed them. So Nanda Maharaj wants to please Lord Krishna and he arranges to do this wonderful yagya to worship the Govardhan Hill. And how are they going to do it? Lord Krishna describes they have to prepare all different kinds of foodstuffs. There should be so many different sweets and salty. There should be bitter and sour. There should be fried and there should be baked 
There's every all different varieties of good stuff should be prepared and they should be offered to Govardhan. So of course it's a very important festival for all Krishna devotees. That's one of the most colorful festivals, one of the most merciful festivals, because usually, you know, on an, on an appearance day, we have to fast. But on Govardhan Puja, there's no fasting. <laughs> so that's a nice feature of the Govardhan Puja. So Nanda Maharaj, with the help of all the bridge Basi people, they cook wonderful preparations, many different preparations, and it's all arranged to offer to Govardhan Hill. And Govardhan Hill appears in a wonderful form and accepts all the offerings. There, there's a place when you go around Govardhan Hill, you must have seen it as you go around the Govardhan Hill, there's a place called Aniyor, right? <laughs> Ani or means bring more, <laughs> right? They were offering everything. They had rivers of chutney and big pools of sweet rice, mountains of samosas and choris and everything. Everything, all different preparations were all made. And Govardhan Hill was accepting all of the offerings. And they were saying, Ani or, Ani or, bring more. They were bringing buckets, buckets of more, more mountains, sweet balls. And Govardhan was taking it all, eating everything. Nanda Maharaj was becoming worried what to do. Then he remembered, oh, put some toasties. And as soon as they put some toasties there, immediately, <laughs> immediately, over the bells. And when you bounce, that's a sign, okay, now you have it. So in this way, Govardhan was satisfied to accept the offering. The only problem was that Indra was not satisfied. Indra was very upset. And he blamed this boy Krishna. He said, this child Krishna is talkative, he's ignorant, he doesn't know. He, he, he thought he was actually insulting Krishna, but actually the goddess of fortune arranged that Indra was actually glorifying Lord Krishna. Because the words which he used could be understood in different ways to have a good meaning, to say that Krishna actually knows everything and he and he is the most learned of all people. However, Indra calls his Shambhantarka clouds. The Shambhantarka clouds are usually used at the time of the devastation of the universe. And he ordered them, go to Braja and then pour all your waters on Braja. I want you to inundate the whole of Braja. No one should survive. Kill all the people and all the cows, everyone. And Indra said, and I'm also coming with you. I'll come on Airavata. So Indra went with the Shandhantarka clouds and those big clouds came over Braja. The whole of Braja became dark, just like night. Although it was the middle of the day, the whole of Braja became dark, it became very cold. There was a bitter cold wind blowing and then balls of ice began to fall from the sky. Ice stones the size of cricket balls were falling from the sky. Everyone was, what, everyone was, what is happening? They had never seen anything like this. Of course, Lord Krishna knew that this is the work of Indra. So Lord Krishna arranged to give everyone shelter. Everyone, of course, came to Krishna for shelter. They didn't know anything else but Lord Krishna. When there's any danger, 
other people gradually just turn to Krishna. They don't think of anybody else. You know, the child will think, Mommy, right? They'll call for their mother. <laughs> but in Vrindavan, everyone would just call for Krishna. When Nanda Maharaj was being swallowed by the big serpent, he called out for Krishna. When the forest fire was blazing around the people of Vrindavan, they, called, they turned to Krishna to save them. When Kaliya came in the, the Yamuna, it was Krishna who came to deliver everyone. So Brishbasi people, they only take shelter of Krishna. They don't think of anyone else when there when there's any problem, any danger, they just think of Krishna. Nobody else can solve the problem but Krishna. So they all came to Krishna. It was so cold, so dark, so frightening. What is happening? Well, Lord Krishna knows this is the work of Indra. So Lord Krishna came and picked up the Govardhan. And he picked up the Govardhan hill and invited everyone, come under the hill. I bring the cows also. Because without the cows, people of Vrindavan are finished. The people of Vrindavan are all Vaishyas. The cows are their livelihood. So they brought all the cows and all the people came under the Govardhan. And Krishna told them, don't be afraid. Krishna is holding up the hill with his left hand, with one little finger. Can you imagine? Can you? Who wants to try? <laughs> so Krishna was holding up the Govardhan hill like this, and at some point, Mother Yashoda she was thinking, "Oh no, I don't think Krishna is really doing it. It must be my husband," <laughs> because Mother Yashoda cannot think of Krishna as her. As God, she can only think of Krishna as her son. And so Baal, one of the cowherd boys, he saw Krishna holding up the hill. He said, he said, you know, maybe you should use your other hand. You've been holding it with your left hand for so long. Maybe you better change to your other hand. Your left hand must be getting stiff now. Anyway, if it gets too heavy for you, you can give it to someone else. <laughs> In this way, the cowherd boys, they only know Krishna as their friend. They don't think of Krishna as God. But Krishna had another, uh, had another wonderful opportunity in picking up the Govardhan Hill, and that was that he was able to be with the gopis for seven days and seven nights. The gopis always wanted to be with Lord Krishna, but they were young girls. And you cannot have young girls with a young boy. It's not good, right? It's not proper, and especially 5,000 years ago, Young girls with a young boy, oh, it's not, not allowed at all. So how could the gopis have the opportunity to associate with Lord Krishna? So when Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill, he called everyone, come under the hill. And all the gopis also came. And they were able to enjoy looking at Krishna for seven days and nights. Now, usually they would never get to look at Krishna for a moment. You're a young girl, don't look at that. <laughs> but when Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill, they had that opportunity to enjoy each other's association without any complaint from anyone. So for seven days and seven nights, 
the Shambhataka clouds were pouring water, torrents of rain, and blowing hurricanes on Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill tolerated all of that. Krishna held up the Govardhan Hill just like a, a toadstool. Just like you pick up a little a toadstool. Krishna was holding up the Govardhan Hill the same way. But he was protecting all the people of Vrindavan. Everybody was under his shelter. And after seven days and nights, then Indra became humbled and he realized he's made a great mistake. And he understands that Krishna is actually his supreme master and worshipful Lord. So Indra understood he made a great advance. And after seven days and nights, the clouds had no more rain to pour. They poured all the rain on the Golden Hill. They, they, they failed. They did not be successful. So they retreated. And then Indra is left. And he realizes he's made a great mistake. So what should he do? How can he come and apologize? Well, after seven days and nights, then Lord Krishna saw the clouds were retreating. So he put the Govardhan hill down again, brought all the people out from the hill, underneath the hill, and he placed Govardhan hill back in position. And at that time, then Indra came, but he, he didn't come alone. He came along with a Surabhi cow. Because Lord Krishna protected not only all the people of Vrindavan, but he protected all the cows. So the cows on this planet, they're all descendants from the Surabi cow, who is the original cows in the spiritual world. So this Surabi cow was a representative of the Surabi cows from the spiritual world. And she came there along with Indra, and they came and met with Lord Krishna. Now Indra had committed a great offense. He tried to kill all the people of Vrindavan and all the cows. Brahma also commits offense. Actually, Brahma's offense was more than the offense of Lord Krishna. Do you know why? The, the reason Brahma's offense was greater, although Indra tried to kill the people of Vrindavan and the cow, Brahma's offense was he took away the devotees from Krishna. He took away the cows and the cow and boys from Lord Krishna. So that was worse. Indra Lord Krishna, with Indra's pastime, Lord Krishna could enjoy the association of the cows and the, and the gopis and everyone. The fence was not as bad as Brahma, but still it was bad. It was very bad. He tried to kill all the people. So Indra came there to apologize. The place is there when you go around Govardhan Hill, it's a place called Govinda Kun. They said that initially that cook was milk because Surabhi cow poured her milk onto Lord Krishna. And Indra came with Surabhi cow in this way. Lord Krishna sees Surabhi and Surabhi is offering her thanks to Krishna that he protected all of the cows who were her descendants. And Indra also apologized. So Lord uh, Krishna doesn't really care for Indra, you know, he's stupid, Indra, you know, nonsense. Anyway, Lord Krishna tells him, go back, behave properly, stop your nonsense. And in this way, Indra uh, is rectified. So this pastime of Govardhan Hill, this is commemorated uh, 
by all the devotees of Lord Krishna everywhere, and we commemorate this pastime by making a hill, which is the replica of the Govardhan Hill. And of course, it's the Govardhan Hill. If you go around Govardhan, it was 22 kilometers or something. 20. Yeah. And so we have not got 22 kilometers here, but you know, we, we do have a Govardhan Hill. And the idea is that this hill is representative of the Govardhan Hill. And just as Krishna taught the people of Vrindavan to offer worship to the Govardhan Hill, we also offer our worship to the Govardhan Hill. And we make the movement to Govardhan Hill out of nice foodstuffs, and then everyone can take some of the Govardhan Hill. And in this way, purify ourselves and also uh, celebrate this wonderful pastime of Lord Krishna picking up the Govardhan Hill and holding it up for seven days and nights. So some people often think about imitating Lord Krishna. We know that Lord Krishna is uh, the supreme enjoyer. And we were saying Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari, that Lord Krishna is enjoying the pastimes in the in the Kunjas of Vrindavan. He's enjoying with the with the with the gopis. So sometimes people think I also want to be like Krishna. So then we say then you must also be Gopi Jana Balava Giri Bharata. You want to enjoy like Krishna, then pick up the Govardhan hill and show us that you're Krishna. So don't try to imitate Krishna, but follow in the footsteps. So we want to learn from this pastime of Govardhan Puja how dangerous it is to become proud in our devotional service. Even someone in the position of Indra, the king of heaven, it's a big position. But if you become proud, then you can make offenses against the Lord. Of course, Krishna can tolerate offenses against himself, but he does not tolerate offenses against his devotee. If somebody offends his devotee, that's more serious. Lord Krishna is tolerant about people offending him. So Lord Krishna purified Indra by this pastime of Govardhan. And at the same time, he is able to enjoy the company of all of his devotees, the gopis of Braja. And he's able to show the wonderful nature of the Supreme Lord, that he possesses inconceivable potencies. He has this achinja shakti. He has the power. If he wants, he can pick up the Govardhan Hill. And he doesn't have to have any real strength. He can hold it with his little finger. This is the wonder of the Supreme Lord. He comes to this world to enact his pastimes so that we can all remember him, that we can appreciate more the wonder, the inconceivable activities of this personality of God. So, so on this day, when Krishna picks up the goal, which is one of the important festivals in this month of Karti, this month of Damoda, when we're worshipping the Lord in this Damoda form. So this pastime was done later on than uh, Damoda. Damoda is when the Lord is small, he's just crawling. But this Govardhan, picking up Govardhan Hill, Krishna was already seven years old. 
So are there any questions? Yes, we can say that worship of other gods is tolerating if you understand these gods in relation to the supreme lord there are examples of uh, Bharat Maharaj for example he worshipped demigods but he worshipped them as part of the supreme lord and so when you perform that worship of the different devas if you understand them in relationship to the supreme lord then it's, it's tolerated the problem comes when people think that all the gods are one and that that was why Srila Prabhupada didn't bring lord shiva into the temple well, there was one temple we were opening in India, it was in Hyderabad actually. And so the devotee said to Prabhupada that, you know, he said, Prabhupada, he said, here we have Jagannath, Lord Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadran, we have Gornitai, and then the Madan Mohan did. And he said, if we put Lord Shiva there, everybody will come. So people know Lord Shiva, they don't know these deep. But Prabhupada said, no. He said, if we put Lord Shiva there, they'll think all the gods are one. They'll think they're all the same. So that is the problem with demigod worship, that we're thinking all the gods are one. And people are worshipping, as you said, Lakshmi and Ganesh, and they're worshipping for material desires, right? They're not worshipping for pure devotion. They're not worshipping to get out of the material world. They're worshipping for temporary material benefits. That is condemned. Worship is meant to actually purify our consciousness. But if they're worshipping other gods for the sake of their own material benefit, it is not so good. So, Bharat Maharaj worshipped these different devas, but he understood them all to be part of the Supreme Lord. But he performed sacrifices, he did that for the pleasure of these different gods. So, in that sense, you can see demigod worship is tolerated. If you understand their connection with the Supreme Lord. But the, as the problem is it, the people forget. <laughs> they're thinking this this is the this the Lord, this is the all the gods are one, they're all the same. So that's a danger. That's why Prabhupada didn't want to introduce the worship of the devas. So 
So Lord Krishna, you can see also, he was not Deva of the Deva worship either. That's why he didn't want to do the Indriyagya. Because that danger is there. The Deva, it's not good for the Devas either. <laughs> they become attached. They think it's, this is for me. Now what is offered to the Devas, it's actually meant for the Supreme Lord. But if the demigods think it's for them, then they're thieves. They're taking what's not actually meant for them. So there are certainly problems there with worship of other gods. Right? They they do so in the wrong way. Abhidi Purvatam. Whatever a man may offer to other gods is actually meant for me alone, but is offered without proper understanding. So this is a problem. People will offer to the, the other gods, they don't understand the actual connection, the relationship. However, if they understand, then it's all right. But I don't think it's not the first chapter. Is there a mention of that before you came out of the time? You have to go to the movie to show Mother Sarah Spati, the goddess of life, Srila Vasudeva, Nana Nara, Sukhmasya, and being. Even Bhagavad talked about many movies to everybody from Vaishnava. Yes. So, 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 so,
And he was teaching, although he was a young man, he had opened his own school, he was teaching. And so he met Keshava Kashmir. And they debated, and Lord Chaitanya had defeated him. So this Keshava Kashmir, he was a great devotee of the goddess Saraswati. And he could not understand how he could be defeated because he always prayed to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. So that night, after he had been defeated by Nimai Pandit, Lord Chaitanya, the goddess Saraswati appeared to him and said, that Nimai Pandit, he is my worshipful Lord and Master. So in this way, Keshava Kashmiri understood the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he also became a Vaishnava. He gave up his debating, he became also a devotee. So, if you worship the Supreme Lord, you don't need to worship all the other devas, but certainly we offer respects, we do offer our respects to them. The Srila Vyasa Deva's done it. It's about, it was Sutta Goswami was speaking that verse. Sutta Goswami. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, let us first offer our respectful obeisances unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, Mother Satisfactory, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasa Deva, the author. So this way, Sutta Goswami is offering. And we also offer respects. It's customary before reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. So we do respect the demigods, but we understand them to be under, they're subordinate, they're under the Supreme Lord. That they're not, it's not that all the gods are one. There's one Supreme Lord, and there's then there's the demigods, there's a higher art. You see, you have one Supreme Lord, and then you have deva, the devas or the demigods, and under that, then we're, we're also under the control of the demigods. But the demigods, they're servants of the Supreme Lord. One time, in our Back to Godhead magazine, well, devotees were writing article, they called it the demigods. And so, Malaysia, there's a Hindu Sangha there. And they, some people in the Hindu Sangha in Malaysia, they saw this art, they saw this, this title, the demigods, and they didn't like it. They said, This is not proper. They said, they're not demigods, they're devas. <laughs> Because they were Maya Bada, they were all Maya Bada, they're saying all the gods of what? They didn't like this term demigods. But Prabhupada uses this term demigods to indicate that there's the Supreme Lord, and below the Supreme Lord, there's other gods who are not equal to Krishna. So he refers to them as demigods. But <laughs> my abides don't like that term. Hey, John. It's a wonderful question. And just a one clarification. Uh, I'm after the God of Jesus, uh, stands to me, after the Prasadam to all the people, including cats and dogs. Is there any significance in that program? Uh, Yes, we, it's customary that we distribute food. Nobody should go hungry, no one. And even the dogs, we should be, right? We, we do like to give prasada to all living entities. It's very important that satisfy everyone, try to give prasada to all people. And so when we, we Go around devotees wherever there's parikrama and festivals and so on, distribution of prasadam. We don't deny anyone prasadam. Rather, if people want prasadam, it's very nice. 
it's we certainly want to satisfy all the dogs and <laughs> everyone, but more of the other side. They said if you don't observe this Govardhan festival, it said that you may be bitten by the snakes on Govardhan Hill. There's a risk. So, <laughs> I, I had the experience at one point. I was in charge of the treasure. That I was the treasurer for our temple in London, and so that it. We had no money, you know, we were very poor. And they wanted money. I said, well, well there's no money yet. We don't have enough money, we can't have all that. But the, the, the devotee said, well, if you don't get the money, you get bitten by the snakes. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was convinced I had to hang over the money. So it's custom in when they have the over the festival, they, they, they throw it, they even throw the prasadam to the people in the temple, you know, be so much prasadam. It's a very joyful festival. People enjoy struggling and pushing and shoving and <laughs> trying to get prasadam. So maybe we could do the the Govardhan Govardhan. Yeah. 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 Do you have to offer now Chapan Bhoga to the... Not offer that meeting yet? Okay, then. Yeah, well... Yeah, if it's not offered, you should make down. Yes. Please have a seat. You can sit down. We'll be offering now for Lordship. And... Well, I've heard that at the time of Lord Krishna, that kun was milk. The Saradi cow, she pulled the milk from her mother, and in this way she bathed Lord Krishna. And that milk which bathed Lord Krishna formed the kun, which was there. And uh, later on, Madhavendra Puri also came there. So Madhavendra Puri was a great devotee of Lord Krishna. Madhavendra Puri, he, he was residing there, Govinda Kund. And Lord Krishna came and brought him milk. So Madhavendra Puri, he, he had the habit that he wouldn't eat unless somebody came and gave him something. He wouldn't eat. He wouldn't beg. You know, just like Sudama. Sudama did he wouldn't beg. So Madhavendra Puri, he was he was a sannyasi and he came there in Vrindavan and he was living there in Govinda in Govinda Khan. And Lord Krishna would come and bring him milk. 
did come as the form of a cowherd boy. He would say, my mother sent me to give you this. My mother said, nobody's allowed to fast in Kandal. So that was the path that we took to it there. At, at that time also, they paid Lord Krishna and they told Lord Krishna that you are actually the real king. You are the real king. You are the king. And that's when Lord Krishna also got the name of Govinda. One who gives pleasure to the cows. So, Lord Krishna enjoys uh, the, the worship of Surabi Kao. He wasn't so much, he wasn't so much appreciative of Indra, but it's an opportunity for Indra to show some, something of his apology, to try to apologize. Later on, there's another pastime how Indra came to, Indra felt guilty about what he'd done. He thought how to atone for that. And so that was when he went to uh, Surabhi, there's a place called Surabhi Coach in Navajri, over in Swar uh, Swarunganj, across from my across the Jalang Yuki, a place called Swarunganj, which is in Gordrimadri, and Surabhi Kunji there. And that's a place where Indra came to do some austerity. To purify yourself. I guess the cow and the people. So, Srila Bhakti, we went backwards. He describes all this in the book, and then another people had me. Yeah, any other question? So we can chant Hare Krishna. Who wants to chant? The good chant. Chant. Jai Radhi Jai Krishna. Do you know that song? You got that song, bro? Not at the moment. Open the video. Jai Radhi Jai Krishna Jai Vrindavan. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 